Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look, of course, at the breaking swipe variant of the Rhyperia. And you're going to see me here running the moveset with Mud Slap instead of the Smackdown moveset, which you can also run, by the way. Smackdown is a little bit of a better move compared to Mud Slap. I think does like one more damage, so it's also currently preferred on PV Poke. But um, for me, you see, I'm still running Rock Wrecker on this Pokemon. And this is the main reason why I went for the Mud Slap over the Smackdown. If you have the Smackdown, you definitely need something like the um, super power, but I didn't want to get rid of a legacy move. So this is definitely the best move that you can have if you still want to keep a rock record. But otherwise, see already, this Pokemon is causing quite some havoc and this was not the only one that I've seen all day. Let me tell you, a lot of people are starting to play this Pokemon, which is kind of funny, but let's take a look at the next game coming up. They're going to have a Mewtwo in the lead. All the games, by the way, I played with this team are in this video, so there's nothing cut out or anything like this, so you can definitely see the perfect picture on how this team is going to work, on if there are some weaknesses for the team, where yeah, it's a glaring weakness actually for the team, which is going to be Ice types, as you can see already. We have a triple weakness to Ice types, which is not that difficult because like there's only one real ice type around which is going to be the mammal swine which you're also going to encounter once so totally fine with that but otherwise i can highly recommend you this team this team was a lot of fun to play it worked out super well for me gained a lot of elo and breaking side variant of the riperia is very very strong as you're going to see as well here right now we can still take an iron head from the opponent as they were debuffed already i can smack them all the way down with e much slap and we will see what's coming in in the back. It's going to be, let's see, it's going to be the Mewtwo again. We can farm them down. The opponent decides to forfeit. Great game there. Next opponent, we see a Rhyperia in the lead. And honestly, I have to admit, I am fairly tired right now and I'm very sick as well over the last two days. So my plays are not always the best. I should have swapped out here already way earlier. Completely forgot, of course, that they are running Breaking Swipe on this Pokemon while me actually having the same Pokemon on my team. I completely forgot about that they actually know Breaking Swipe. They didn't go for it at the end of the day, which is fine for me and we are still going to be able to do this. But I was like sitting there, I was like, what am I doing with my life? Honestly, like I literally completely forgot about that they actually would learn Breaking Swipe as well. So the lead matchup is actually not as ideal as just was there. I was just very lucky that they went for the Rock Wrecker. So Definitely not ideally played for me, but still our Rock, uh, rock Wrecker and Breaking Swipe variant of R R Rhyperia here is going to be able to cause some havoc against the opponent's team completely here. Yeah. I see opponent going to have a Rhyperia coming in. Also, by the way, the player I'm playing is actually a viewer of mine as well, which I battle basically every time I ask for battles on Twitter. So it's kind of funny to see them on in Go Battle League as well. As we actually have some other people as well that I know, which is not this person here, but we're going to encounter a guard chomp. But interestingly enough, I face a lot of familiar people recently. Like also not in all the ones that are actually ending up in a video because I had to play some teams before that, that as well in the last cup, which didn't even make it onto YouTube because I didn't have a time slot for it. But so many interesting people that I know from social media, which is kind of always cool to see. But here we're going to see something that I was not really prepared for. And and that kind of caught me off guard in my first few battles that I played with this team, which is going to be Lugia. Because I expected that Lugia would be way more rare because um, on how this all functions. But as you can see right now, um, the Lugia is acting a little bit differently than what you like look like, basically. Because um, Niantic made an oopsie. Niantic decided to revert all the changes of the season in the beginning of the cup, which is currently back again. Like, basically everything is okay again. But basically, as soon as the Master League started, um, all the changes got reverted for a around a little bit more than one hour, I think. So the Lugias that you're going to see here right now, actually going to get to the Sky Attack still one fast move faster than they were supposed to do. So um, this issue is not going to be as difficult, or like Lugia going to be not as difficult when you're going to play it later on. But right now, you're still going to see basically the pre-nerf or like yeah, yeah, the pre-nerf Lugia against me the entire time, which is actually really bad. And definitely here, while I still won this game, definitely cost me some games as well, I think, or like made me play a little differently, which is kind of funny to see because yeah, that's not how it's supposed to work. It's still, of course, footage from this season we use in breaking swipe on the Rhyperia, but Niantic screwed up for around one hour and put big, basically big all the changes that they did before. You were also not able to learn um the moves, which you're now again able to. I saw some comments as well, so like if you're wondering why you were not able to get like Breaking Swipe on Rhyperia for the first hour after the cup started, Neantic just made an oopsie. 
So hopefully you can still get your TMs back through the support, but definitely be aware of that. Also be aware that this um, team here of Xerneas was Lugia in the back can be a little bit tricky for me. And again, this Lugia is going to get to their charge moves a little bit faster, which is going to catch me off guard quite a lot. They got there basically, I think, directly after 5, which I was super confused about, because they now need 6 all the time. But um, as you can see here right now, the opponent going to go for 5 again, or now actually for 6. But um, yeah, they are actually going to be able to spam way, way more often, which is not how it's supposed to be. But it does not really matter too much right now, as I'm going to let this move go through. I still should be able to get to a breaking swipe here, maybe. No, I'm actually going to swap out. Now I can go for a breaking swipe here, though, with our Red Kraza. So we're actually running a double breaking swipe team as well here, which is kind of nice. As the opponent goes into the Xerneas, and you know already what's coming. I might actually make a video about Aerial Ace Ray Kraza as well, because I have two level 50 Ray Krazers, and I can put one on Aerial Ace and one on, of course, here, the Dragon Ascent, which might be cool. But right now, Dragon Ascent just were able to completely nuke the opponent's Xerneas, which is really cool to see, and we can move on to the next game. Next opponent, we're going to have the Giratina in the lead. This is an interesting matchup as well, as we're going to see the opponent having the Mammoth Swine coming in. This is definitely the worst possible Pokemon to face. You see me going straight for a Breaking Swipe to get some damage onto the opponent and swapping out now into my Rhyperia. Rhyperia can take those moves a little bit easier as you're only single weak against it, while both of my other Pokemon are part flying as well as a part that's going to be weak to ice, so double, um, yeah, double effective is the ice moves against me there with all my other two Pokemon. But yeah, we kind of actually still came back kind of decently from this as we were able to get some energy here, only lost one shield, and I still have the switch advantage, which is going to be nice as I can now align my Ray Crazer against the opponent's, um, what's called Giratina here. But they're actually going to go for the knockout against me first. And this is looking really good for me at this point, as I can just go into my Rayquaza, and we will see the Gyarados swapping in. I maybe shouldn't have went for this one, but Gyarados is kind of the core breaker for this team, so the backline literally kind of core break for me as well. And I am forced to go ahead and let those moves go through against me here, which is definitely the best play that I can do. And sadly, I'm missing out onto the Stone Edge by just one fast move, which is really annoying as now I am going to be able to knock them out, but they're going to be able to farm me down. And I should have just let not the opponent. Yeah, basically, I should have just raid out before I threw the Stone Edge and let the opponent farm me down a little bit further, which would allow me most likely to actually still win this game because like this, the opponent is going to be able to outspeed me, which they wouldn't have done if I let the opponent's Gyarados farm down my one Pokemon a little bit more. So like in a, in a perfect world, I could have been definitely able to win this game. This player is actually someone that I coached before. Um, so definitely if you want coaching, also link in the description. And I definitely misplayed this game quite a bit as far as I remember at least. This was the first battle I think that I actually did with this team, so shout out to you as well. Most likely you're going to watch this one. But um, Wild Charge Zacian is actually kind of fine for me. And I can go for the super power here to knock them out. So, so far so good actually. Because, okay, they're going to use a shield, which is fine. I'm going to use a shield as well. But I'm going to be able to either realign here right now. Or I'm just going to be able to knock them out. Or like get a shield advantage. Anything is going to be fine for me right now. So, here, super power. Going to get the knockout. And we're going to see the Lugia coming in. And again... It's a pre-nerf Lugia for whatever reason, which is going to be a little bit more awkward. And I just don't know why I did this. Like, I should have just went straight to my Rhyperia, but I decided to go into my Rayquaza. But here, I think it's just because I got confused about the move timing. And I was like, why are they getting to the move so fast? But again, it was like pre-nerf for whatever reason. Yantic decided to do this for the first hour of the cup. So I was like thinking, I can go for one more fast move and catch the move onto my Rhyperia. But no, I was not able to do this because the game was not running correctly. So I'm most likely in a world where Lugia actually got the nerf. I would have been fine here. But also I make another mistake here, I think, as I decide to go for the breaking swipe on the CMP tie, which is really awkward. Because either I would have been able to just let the move go through maybe or something like this. I actually, no, never mind. I should have just tried to farm them all the way down and try to have two moves start for the Lugia. But again, yeah, it's, it's a little bit awkward. I would have definitely won this game if the opponent didn't have like the buffed... A sky attack again or like the new normal sky attack from last season but they definitely have this here which is going to win them the game good game to them but of course yeah basically Niantic won them the game because of the recent change towards it for whatever reason Niantic did this but yeah at least it's gone now it's all normal all the changes are back in place but of course it affects the gameplay that you're seeing here right now which is 
kind of ridiculous and something that I actually never considered while doing this. I made a tweet about it uh, saying like warning people that those changes are got rewarded again, but I never really realized that I actually came up against the Pokemon that actually used it. And I'm just now kind of realizing that, oh, I kind of got screwed over by the game here at a lot of points. So the team actually would have prefer like performed even better for me if like the game was acting normal, which it does right now. So definitely a solid team to use and I can highly recommend it to you. Like, was a lot of fun to play this team. As we're going to encounter Azacian, which is going to go for the close combat here as we can now go for the full farm. Now I'm going to use another shield because close combat would hurt quite a bit and I expect them to be weak against me in the back. But it's going to be an extra drill and this is going to be a tough one. Let's take a look at this one here real quick. We were able to catch the drill run, which is going to be amazing and they're going to swap out immediately into the man battle. Issue here is I don't have a move to hit them with and this is why superpower is usually preferred on the um, yeah, onto your, what's called, Rhyperia here, because Rhyperia otherwise just use its counters really to, like, the Steel-type Pokemon that are not called, um, what's called the, uh, the Alga. The Alga would, of course, still be fine with the Breaking Swipe, but here we're going to be able to take a Superpower, and it's still going to be such a tough one. But I'm not too scared about the Thundershock, because Thundershock is doing basically one damage because it's double-resisted, so it's now all down to the Excadrill, but because we have 100 energy, we can go for one Breaking Swipe, Go for a Rock Wrecker, knock them out, and now it's only the Melmetal left, which you can just farm down. And our Rhyperia was able to save the day here, and it was able to win us this game. So, good game there to the opponent. Definitely cool one for us that we were able to completely destroy them with the Rhyperia. Zacian against the Landorus. This is going to be an interesting matchup, as we're going to be able to use a shield here against the incoming play rough, which would do a ton of damage. I can go for my own um, Stone Edge. This is going to do some decent damage against the opponent, as they're going to let this move go through. I can force some more shields from the opponent with Super Power, which is going to be always enough to knock them out, as they decide to um, shield one move up. And I can shield this next move up, because I have so much energy already. But we're going to now see the Ho-Oh coming in. And what we can do is we can go for a Stone Edge, force the final shield by the opponent, swap out, and have a Viperia against them. Most ho -Oh are currently playing the Sacred Fire plus Brave Bird. And I'm fairly certain that at this point of time, right now, um, Earthquake is the better move to go for for the ho -Oh. I'm fairly certain this change can afford right now. Yes, of course, Sacred Fire is nice, but Earthquake does basically a similar job, but has like so many different matchups where it's a little bit better. Better against Yalga, better against Zegra, better against no Viperia better against um, a lot of Pokemon like also Heatran. So I'm fairly certain that you kind of don't even really want to have Sacred Fire on this Pokemon anymore, especially as you still have a very hard hitting stab move in Brave Bird already. So um, I think Earthquake, Rhyperia, maybe actually, but look, like, yeah, Earthquake, Rhyperia, Earthquake, ho of course, kind of still a little bit awkward because also Earthquake got nerfed. So I don't know, maybe they're still equal for me, but they both definitely have some play and maybe Earthquake has a little bit more play in this season now. But you're still mostly going to see Sacred Fire more often because Earthquake got nerfed. But pre-Earthquake nerf, maybe Earthquake would have been the better play. Here we're just going to see the ho -Oh going completely down there as the opponent going to forfeit against our Rhyperia as we can now move on into the second to last game. We're going to have a Mirror Lead here. We're going to have Ray Crazy against Ray Crazy, and we can go for the Breaking Swipe in order to win the first matchup. Because we're going to get there first, we're going to see the shield coming up from the opponent, but we're going to use our own shield here in order to keep alignment because we have to get them low, but they're going to swap out now into the Xerneas. I'm forced to go into my Rhyperia as the opponent going to be able to go for the close combat, which I can take one of them, and I have to shield the second one though. And now they're at minus four um, yeah, defense here, which is going to allow us to even go for breaking swipe, which in this case was not really the smallest move. The uh, rock record would have been way better for me, but I'm still going to be able to force a knockout against the opponent, which is fine. But we will see now the opponent's right crazy coming in. If I went for the rock record, I would have been able to get to another move. So like this, this is going to be a little bit of a tough one to come back from. They're going to go for the Breaking Swipe against me. I can go for one more fast move, go for the Superpower, force the Shield from the opponent or get the Knockout. Neither of them actually, because of the Breaking Swipe nerf, it didn't even get the Knockout and they're going to have the Rhyperia with Smackdown in the back. If they had the Mud Slap, I actually think I would have been fine here because I would have not been, um, yeah close to a farmland range for either of their of, of my Pokemon because they're both flying, but because they actually run Smackdown on this Pokemon, they were able to smack me down from the air there, and we can move on to the final game, which is going to be the Mewtwo. So, yeah, 
again, I'm a little bit sick today, so also yesterday already, but um, so if I sound a little bit different or like if it's a little bit awkward to commentate, I'm sorry about this, cannot really change it, but we're going to see the Minuta coming in right now, which is going to take the breaking, so I'm going to use the shield here, which is kind of interesting, as I can now shield up the move from the opponent as well. If I want to, but I don't want to, I can still realign the one shield scenario against them. Which is the cool thing about Rayquaza, you lose the zero shield, but you can win the one and the two shield scenario against it. So, I will go into my um, Landorus, force a shield against the opponent with a superpower. And I can swap out afterwards now into my Rhyperia, taking the move from the opponent. I might shield, do I shield? I do not shield. Keep the shield for my other Pokemon. As you can see now, the Garchomp coming in. I can go for a Breaking Swipe, which will allow us to drop the opponent's attack, of course, here, which is gonna be nice as we now take this incoming move, like the Earth Power from the opponent. Knowing that they're double nuke, I'm kind of hopeful that I can just go ahead and go for a Stone Edge and maybe farm down afterwards, which would be the best ideal scenario for me. But let's see what we can do. Maybe we have to go for the Super Power, but I decided to go for the Stone Edge here. And let's see if this is going to be enough. It's just barely not, but I can just perfectly farm down. We have two Super Powers stored, and I just only need one to knock them out. So this is going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like. Check out the videos on the screen, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.